Welcome to Google Developer Student Club's 2023 Solution Challenge Demo Day. This is our fourth year hosting Demo Day and over 5,000 university students from around the world took on the mission to use Google technology to solve for one of the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. These student teams were up for the challenge to find ways to fight climate change innovate global infrastructure, and ensure the good health and well-being of our society. Since June, the Solution Challenge Global Top 100 teams have received guidance and support from Google through training events, code labs, and mentoring sessions. And after all that hard work, we have the top 10 finalists with us live today. They will demo their projects so our judges can select the top three global winning teams. These projects are over six months in the making, and I have to say, they're pretty impressive. The students here today have come together with members from their local Google Developer Student Clubs to create some incredible project ideas in support of the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Francois, and I'm glad to be here as your host today. I'm joining as the Global Program Manager of Google Developer Student Clubs, and I'd like to share a little about why Google Developer Student Clubs is important to me. I've been committed to supporting students discover and articulate goals that are aligned with their values. In my role at Google, I get the privilege to serve students who are curious and passionate about tech's transformational possibilities and witness the collective power of students to shift their communities and society for good. I hope you all are just as excited as I am to hear from all of these amazing students. So here's what's on the agenda for today. We'll check out the demos from each of the top 10 solution challenge teams. Then you and the judges will have the chance to ask teams questions live and vote on your favorite team for the People's Choice Award. After we've seen all of the demos and heard from the teams, we will announce the top three winners and the People's Choice Award. You may be asking, how do I join the Q&A and vote for my favorite team? Great question. We'll use a tool called Slido to help everyone participate with us today. To access Slido on your laptop, phone, or tablet device, scan the QR code you see on the screen, or add the text code GDSC23 into slido.com. If you're having trouble accessing Slido, feel free to interact in the YouTube live chat for support. As you chat, please be mindful of the community and keep your comments supportive. Let's try it out. Go into the chat, tell us where you're joining us from. I know we have folks from all over the world. For those tuning in via watch parties and other forums around the globe, join us on social media and post live. Use the hashtag GDSC Demo Day for a chance to be featured on our community wall throughout today's event. Now let's get things started by meeting our amazing judges. Each of these judges bring diverse backgrounds and expertise that span technical areas like machine learning and Google Cloud, and experience supporting developers from all around the world. We are super thankful to have them here to help choose our top three winning teams for this year's Solution Challenge. The judges will each introduce themselves during the Q&A, where they will ask the team's questions to learn more about their projects, the inspiration, and the technology behind it. Each project is being judged by the same criteria which measures the project's impact and use of technology with a specific focus on using at least one Google technology to solve for one or more of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Here are some examples of what the students aimed to solve for. So as you can see here, each team used this framework to form their project ideas while also solving difficult problems in their local and global communities. It's truly been inspiring to see how each team has created solutions to tackle the challenging issues we now face as a global community. I wanna give a big shout out to all the students who participated and submitted their projects. We are grateful for all the hard work each team has dedicated. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's see the demos and meet the teams. It's now my pleasure to bring us over to Southeast Asia as we introduce the team from Singapore. Hit Home is a mobile app that utilizes technology and community involvement to enhance the lives of dementia patients and caregivers. Hit Home focuses on tackling dementia wandering, a very serious issue that can lead to injury or death. The app provides a real-time solution that connects patients, caregivers, 
and volunteers. Patients can rely on intuitive instructions from a dedicated watch or receive assistance from caregivers and volunteers for a safe return home. The Head Home app is built on Google Cloud using technologies such as Cloud Run, Google Maps, and Firebase. Welcome to creators Bao Zheng, Hui Xiang, Jingxuan, and Mark from Nanyang Technology University in Singapore. Hi all, we are Team Head Home. Dementia wandering is a major external risk faced by dementia patients. It is estimated that 60% of dementia patients have wandering episodes, which can leave them in life-threatening situations. Our solution aims to reduce these dangers by providing caregivers with an effective means of locating them and involving the community to return them home safely. Here is how our solution can help Uncle Adrian, who is currently experiencing a dementia wandering episode and is lost. To call for help, he presses the watch button to send an alert to his caregiver. This alert will also be sent if he has left a configured safe zone radius around his house or if he activated the alert on the companion app. This is Mr. Che, Uncle Adrian's caregiver. He has just received the alert notification sent by Uncle Adrian. After verifying that Uncle Adrian needs help to return home, he will send out the SOS signal to activate the volunteers. Now, any volunteer near Uncle Adrian's location will be able to see that he has requested for help. Here is Mark, a volunteer. After logging into his volunteer account, he will be able to see that Uncle Adrian might need assistance and locate Uncle Adrian's current location to provide help. Upon finding Uncle Adrian, Mark will first enter the unique authentication ID within Uncle Adrian's app, and only then would he obtain Uncle Adrian's address. With the directions on Uncle Adrian's watch, the clear directional images using Google Street View, and Mark's assistance, Uncle Adrian can be safely guided home. With Hate Home, dementia patients can thus be empowered to guide themselves home or choose to receive help from the community if needed. Hate Home leverages various Google Cloud platform solutions to provide a seamless experience for stakeholders. Users will interact with the presentation layer, which communicates to GCP services like Maps Platform and Firebase to provide key business functionalities. Developers will leverage our integrated CI-CD pipeline to help them automatically deploy a containerized application. Our operation layer also allows stakeholders to monitor the backend health via the built-in monitoring and logging dashboards. Our business intelligence platform built using BigQuery and Looker allows emergency services and caregivers to monitor patient activity and better respond to their needs. Hit Home task addresses the patient caregivers, and the community's needs when facing wandering dementia patients. Hi again. As someone who has a loved one experiencing dementia, to see that, that this solution offers a technology in real time brings like real great comfort. So join me now in welcoming Team Head Home and our Google judge Priyanka, who will introduce herself and ask the team some questions. Over to you, Priyanka. Thank you, Rachel. I am developer advocate for Google Cloud. And I am especially excited to speak with the teams today, especially because going through all of these solution entries, it was awesome to see Google Cloud playing this role of connective tissue amongst all the other things, including Android and Firebase and Maps. And um, and so I'm very excited to welcome Team Head Home. Uh, very amazing, great application. I have a few questions that I want to ask you all. Uh, so let's just uh, jump right into those. How did you choose the Google Cloud products that create this solution? And I'm interested in learning more about your approach. Was it step-by-step? -step? Was it incremental, one shot as you were building this architecture? All right, thank you for the other question. Um, I think I'll take this on behalf of my team. So the approach that my team took was uh, definitely an incremental one. And at each phase of this project, we were very methodical in terms of both the planning as well as the execution of our um, development. So before even starting out, our team took a lot of time to understand the needs of our stakeholders who are dementia patients as well as their caregivers in this case. Uh, after this phase, we then delved deep into the design of our solution architecture to evaluate different DCP products at our disposal. So we weighed their pros and cons and really selected those that best fit our needs. So one example would be the decision to utilize uh, Google Cloud Run over App Engine. This was driven not only by micro scale factors, such as the additional flexibility and control on the developer's end, uh, but also macro scale factors, such as the anticipated usage patterns of our stakeholders, like the caregivers, as well as the dementia patients themselves. So after building the core of our application, we then incrementally expanded upon the scope of our solution. Various building blocks of our application like the business intelligence platform, which involves uh, BigQuery as well as Luca, were crafted later on in the development process 
to further improve the application's utility. Ultimately, we ended up with what I believe is a very comprehensive system that takes advantage of more than 15 different Google Cloud Platform products, as seen in our system architecture diagram uh, in the demo video playback just now. So to sum up, the, uh, by following a very incremental approach, we meticulously developed our um, very meticulously built upon each decision and catered to the needs of different groups, such as the application users, developers, and business stakeholders to deliver project hit home as it is now. Yeah. Incremental is what I like to hear always because um, you're learning, you're making improvements, you're seeing the traffic patterns. You gave such a great example with Cloud Run, App Engine, all of that. Um, very impressive to hear. Uh, and the next, my next question is a little bit more curious. So did you take inspiration from what solutions were out there as you were solving this uh, issue currently? And did you speak with doctors, caregivers of, of dementia patients to get feedback on enhancements? Tell us more about that. Yeah, thanks for the question, Priyanka. We looked at different applications uh, for inspiration, and one of them was Cara an app that links dementia patients in Singapore to an ecosystem of personalized dementia support and benefits. CARA currently focuses more on aiding caregivers and encouraging the public to help, but lacks an emphasis towards helping elderly patients gain independence and navigate through their wandering episodes on their own. As such, we incorporated features such as inbuilt navigation and designed our 3D printed watch prototype to encourage patients to find their way home on their own. We garnered available feedback from interviewing dementia caregivers as well. For example, um, one dementia patient was only able to recall their childhood memories, causing them to leave their house at odd times to return to their childhood home. This resulted in their caregivers feeling very stressed as they were constantly worried about their well-being. One suggestion we implemented to mitigate this was adjustable safe zones, which gives caregivers the flexibility to further tighten their safe zone. This adjustment means that the caregiver can be immediately alerted when the patients leave their home. In the future, we aim to work with even more dementia caregivers and patients to solicit more feedback and to further refine our solution. Thank you. Very good. Um, I'm so excited for all the improvements that you are going to make to uh, the application going forward as well. And over to um, to you, Rachel. Thank you, Priyanka. Thank you for those questions. And thank you, Team Head Home, for those really thoughtful responses. Thank you all for the time now, and we'll move over to the next demo. Greetings of the day, everyone. Wow, I really enjoyed the last demo, and I'm excited to introduce the next one. Now we have HearSitter. HearSitter aims to enhance the daily lives of those with hearing impairments. After a series of interviews, this project team identified issues like the inability to hear crucial sounds, such as a baby's cry. HearSitter addresses SDG 4, 10, and 11. HearSitter was built using Flutter, Golang, Fiber, and AngularJS. Join me in welcoming the creators of the project, Dongjae, Juhi, Hyojung, and Youngmin from Yonsei University Seoul campus in South Korea. HearSitter is an app that assists deaf parents who are raising young children that helps them address problems they might face during childcare. The app's inspiration came from the Seoul Nong School, a public school for students with hearing disabilities, where a deaf teacher informed us about the hardships of raising a young child while experiencing hearing difficulties. The SDGs that this project addresses are Goal 4, Quality Education Goal 10, Reduced Inequalities and Goal 11, Sustainable Cities To create the app, we conducted app usability tests and function tests App detects and streams sounds to the main server each second, where the main server uses load balancing to distribute the requests to a series of ML servers where the sound is analyzed. 
The analysis results are then delivered to the main server, which sends the results back to the app for sending alerts. Here's our demonstration. You can select the sounds you want the app to recognize. The app is able to recognize several different types of sounds, such as glass breaking, an infant crying, fire alarms, car horn honking, and much more. You can also receive notifications through smartwatches. It's always so cool to see that demo and see the real time sound detection. Welcome back, y'all, and thank you for joining us, Team Hearsitter. We have Bianca back with us to ask some questions. And just a reminder for our live audience, please feel free to engage with Slido and add your questions, and we might have time to take one of your questions during the session with this team. So over to you, Priyanka. Great. To your point, uh, it is so amazing to see, um, like, even imagine as as the demo was going on, I was imagining all the different use cases that um, that this application can support. So I just want to applaud um, team here, Sitter, uh, for for coming up with an with this great idea and actually going through an implementation of it. With that, my first question is: What technologies do you use to recognize different uh, sounds that you're doing today? And then, how do you plan to support more sound detections? So our recognition process is based on the paper, Efficient Audio Tagging, which is a multi-class sound classification model. Since the application has to run in real time, our first concerns were the model complexity and inference time. Efficient AT uses knowledge distillation to transfer learning from complex models like transformers to CNN-based LiDAR models. We have to support two types of sound detections namely label classification and speech recognition. Speech recognition includes if parents' names, mama and papa, are called. We can add a speech recognition function to the client side using Google Speech API. Label classification needs the combination of models results. The audio set data has 527 labels, and we can add more sound labels by assembling the results. For example, if we want to add vehicle sounds, we can combine the result of vehicle label, motor vehicle label, car label, and others. Great, that gives you the scale and the ability to apply um, the use case into multiple different um, areas. Uh, very exciting. Now, my next question is about your, your solution architecture. So how did you go about defining this architecture for the application? Um, and then how do you plan on scaling it to thousands and you know, if the app grows even further to large number of users? When developing our application's architecture, we drew inspiration from series design. We thought about how Siri could detect our sound with little battery usage all day long. Siri had a simple trigger model inside the client's device. If the trigger model is activated, then it sends a sound analysis request to the server for precise classification. Inspired by Siri's design, we thought of an architecture to send the request to server side and classify the sounds inside ML servers. We devised a scalable architecture comprising a main server and multiple ML servers. The main server acts as a central hub, distributing user requests to ML servers. In this process, we used GoRoutine and gRPC. As their user base grows, the system can scale by adding more ML servers using Google, Google Clouds. As a result, HearSitter can handle a large number of users and provide fast response time. That's amazing. You, you've thought through how it's going to expand and grow. And again, I, I love hearing that you're doing it on Google Cloud, the whole scale part and the machine learning. Um, definitely something that excites me. Um, so with that, those are all my questions. Um, Rachel, over to you. 
Thanks, Priyanka. I actually do have a live question for you all, team here sitter. And I'd like to pose and anyone on the team can take this question. Did you encounter any challenges as you were building here sitter? If so, what were those challenges and how did you overcome them? And again, anyone on the team can take this. Um, maybe the first thing in my thought is when we made the planning of the project, we first thought of an application for hearing impaired, impaired for alarming, alarming their hazard situations such as fire alarms. And we thought of car honks, car horns could be a serious danger for them. And we interviewed them and changed our planning. I mean, pivoting from hazard alarm system to to for hearing impaired babysitting application. So the challenge was the planning stage, I guess. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that response, team. And that's it for questions from now for now. So thank you, team here sitter, for those responses. And we'll move on to the next demo. Now we'll hear from Femunity. Femunity is an innovative social media platform that empowers women by providing a safe and inclusive online space. The platform fosters positive relationships, promotes health and wellness, and enables digital safety. Femunity leverages the power of Google technologies such as Flutter and Firebase to deliver a seamless user experience. Let's welcome the members of the team, Amritanj and Arin from the Weller Institute of Technology in India. Despite the progress made towards gender equality, women still face significant challenges in online communities. They are subjected to toxicity and harassment, making it difficult for them to connect and support each other. We are mocked for our opinions and struggle to find a safe and supportive space online. Our research has revealed the need for a platform that fosters positive connection among women. A platform where they can find support and encouragement in a non-toxic and welcoming environment. To tackle this issue, we created Femunity. Let's walk you through the app. You can log in through your Google account and you land right on the homepage. Here you can access posts from the communities which you are a part of. You can interact with other posts while also being able to add your own. Users can also continue their discussion in the comments. There are various communities you can create or join to discuss the topics of your interest. There is a system-wide profanity filter and moderation which helps keep the app safe for everyone. Based on user reviews and feedback, we decided to enhance the app's functionality by incorporating some sort of the features. Through our opportunity section, we foster greater access to scholarships and employment opportunities for women in STEM, business and law. The safety segment offers users a convenient way to access a range of digital protection resources. It also provides guides on identifying cybercrime and online harassment, helping users stay informed about potential online risks. In case of emergencies, users have the ability to swiftly contact emergency services and share their live location, ensuring timely assistance when needed. The menstrual tracker and advisor allows our user to anticipate the dates of their period cycle and check the cycle history. We also introduced Saki, an AI chatbot, which allows our users to share their thoughts, feelings, or concerns and get honest and accurate answers. We developed our application using Flutter, Firebase, and deployed it on Android for intuitive development and easy scalability. With Femunity, we are not only trying to create a safe space for women online, but we are enabling them to have better access to scholarships and opportunities, to care for my mental and physical well being, to be aware of my digital rights and securities. I'm now joined here with Team Femunity and our Google judge, Stephanie, who I'll pass it over to do a brief introduction of herself and ask the team some questions. Over to you, Stephanie. Thank you so much, Rachel. It's been a pleasure to be reviewing all of these apps and it's so exciting to be here today. So thank you for inviting me to be a judge. Um, my name is Stephanie Taylor, and I lead the Google Summer of Code program. So very excited to chat with folks today. And I have a couple of questions for the Femunity team, if you're ready. All right. So you mentioned that there's moderation and a profanity filter built into the app. Because you're creating a safe space, it's really important that the moderation is very strong. So exactly how does your moderation work? 
Hey Stephanie, this is certainly an interesting question. Our community moderators play a pivotal role in upholding the platform's integrity. They are selected by the community founders based on their commitment and activeness. These, mon these moderators monitor user-generated content, discussions and interactions within the community. They have the authority to address any concerns, enforce community guidelines, and take necessary actions against any inappropriate behavior. To tackle profanity, we have implemented an advanced content filtering mechanism using Flutter text control tools and profanity filter package. This automatic filtering system quickly identifies and blocks any profane language across the entire app. We are also in the process of beta testing and implementation of Google Cloud Vision technology, which allows us to analyze and verify media files uploaded by users, ensuring that any harmful or inappropriate content is flagged and promptly removed. Furthermore, our team is working on developing a language model specifically tailored to detect spam, hate speech, and offensive content. Rest assured, our moderation measures are designed with utmost diligence and dedication to maintain a truly safe and welcoming community. That's awesome. Great. Thank you so much. I do have another question for you. Having the feature with scholarships and opportunities is really a great idea. So what resources are you drawing from to keep those up to date with new opportunities and then also removing the expired ones? Hello, Stephanie. To address this, uh, address this issue, I would like to get in depth with our current approach, which involves carefully curating lists from diverse resources, such as job boards, scholarships, search engines, nonprofit organizations, and educational institutes. While this manual workflow has served us well, we are on a successful trajectory to automate this, making this process more efficient and organized. To achieve this, we have devised a method using uh, Firebase Runtime database and implementing an intelligent data and web analytics tool. Through this automated process, we can deliver real-time updates and ensure precise filtering of opportunities for our users and of various domains. This will empower young women to effort, effort, uh, sorry, effort, uh, effortlessly discover the most relevant and advantageous prospect tailored according to their domains. Great, thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie, for those questions and thank you team for responding. It looks like we have a live audience question that I'd like to throw at you now. What was your biggest inspiration for this project? And anyone on the team can take it. Okay, so that's an interesting question. The biggest inspiration, or I would say the idea for this app came to me when uh, one of my female friends came to me ranting about online toxicity and how the social media culture is not very appropriate. She expressed how most of the apps we use today are male dominated, making it very challenging for women to share the normal comments or opinions on any matter without facing bash or disrespect. Inspired to tackle this problem, our team envisioned a community-based application that would empower women to confidently put their ideas. Great, thank Precisely. you for that response. Yeah, go ahead, did you wanna to add to it? Precisely, because uh, when we were interacting like in a metropolitan university environment, we see a lot of uh, our friends and a lot of people struggling to like uh, settle in a new environment. So we wanted to make a very friendly community-based application, which will not only give them a platform to voice their opinions, but will also keep them away from the general negativity and toxicity of open social media. Awesome. Well, kudos to you both for creating a safe and brave space um, as advocates for women identifying users. So thank you all for the time. For the time now, and these are all the time that we have for questions, and we'll move on to the next demo. Thanks. Hi again, we're headed back to Southeast Asia with a team from Indonesia, and I'm happy to introduce Wanda Reader. Wanda Reader is a 3D printed digital braille reader that helps visually impaired students learn. The device connects to a smartphone wirelessly and allows teachers to send questions to the device through Bluetooth and receive answers from the students by using the built-in braille keyboard. Wanda Reader was built using Google Cloud, Firebase, Flutter, and Google Text-to-Speech API. Let's meet Jason JJ, Philippus, Arik, and Jason JC from Vinus University International in Indonesia. Since 1824, Braille has been the standard written language for the visually impaired. 
the medium has continued to evolve following technology. However, due to recent development of text-to-speech technology, the interest for learning Braille has decreased, thus causing it to be potentially lost in the future. Braille masih digunakan untuk tunanetra, terutama bagi tunanetra yang baru mengenal Braille dan untuk buku-buku eksakta. Along with that, modern Braille devices are not as easily affordable for third world countries. Introducing Wonder Reader V2. Wonder Reader is not just for learning Braille, it's for empowerment. As an accessible 3D printed Braille reader, Wonder Reader improves the educational opportunities for visually impaired individuals. All of this is an effort to reduce the gap in educational opportunities for visually impaired individuals. Wonder Reader directly communicates with the Android mobile app designed for teachers to communicate to students. The teacher can send their custom pre-made questions which will appear on the student's device. The student can then reply with an answer which the teacher can easily see and check. Students can type their answer with Wonder Reader's built-in Braille keyboard as well as use the button to listen to the question. After rounds of testing, we have some improvements Hello. coming in. A new iteration of the Wonder Reader device that takes into account the user's needs. Our companion app is now native on Android, making it easily accessible anywhere. Firebase stores teacher and question data for effortless scalability. Bluetooth Low Energy is used to connect and communicate between the app and the device, and allows for multiple device support. Google's text-to-speech API is used to create realistic sounding voices. Question 11 plus 13. With our future aim of slowly expanding our reach to potential partners worldwide, Wonder Reader will be able to help visually impaired people all over the world to learn and grow. It's a tool that truly lives up to its name, Wonder Reader. I love how this solution monetizes a tool that impairs, excuse me, enables more folks in our society to learn and communicate. So I'm back with Stephanie to introduce now Team Wonder Reader and we'll ask a few questions to the team. Over to you, Stephanie. Great, thanks so much, Rachel. So this is a really fun app to review. And so I've got a couple of questions for you. First of all, you mentioned that your plans to release both the code and the models for the hardware of the reader itself to really reach more people and to allow others to create their own versions of Wonder Reader which I strongly encourage. Um, was this built from the very beginning with the intention of releasing the code as open source or did that really decision come later? And which open source license did you use? And how close are you releasing the code publicly? All right, thanks Stephanie. So since the beginning of, of the project, we've had our eyes set on openness and reach as our number one goal. So we went into this with the mindset of creating the most amount of impact and benefit to the community. And because of that, we set our vision of Wonder Reader to be an open source, refreshable Braille display. Everything, including the design files, code, and documentations will be accessible for all. This allows collaboration on a global scale to iterate on Wonder Reader. Everything is public and will remain open after the competition. In regards to the open source license, we're selecting the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Like 4.0 license. This is to protect the project com commercially while still keeping it open. That said, we're still open for ideas, so please reach out to us if it's in your area of expertise. Wonderful, thank you. And then I have one more question for you. So using 3D printers and more available materials makes it significantly more accessible for anyone to reproduce with access to a 3D printer. But 3D printers are not available in many parts of the world. So how do you plan to distribute these to people in more rural areas of the world? That's a great question. We're currently in the progress of developing a third prototype, which is more reproducible and faster with the plan of being able to eventually mass produce it and distribute it ourselves. Yeah, so our future vision for the project is to be able to create a like a DIY kit that can be purchased or distributed for people to build their own Wonder Reader. This allows for accelerated adoption of Wonder Reader by enabling others to create and distribute our products to the communities that need it. And these DIY kits would have all the materials and instructions for people to create their very own Wonder Reader. We are aiming to create 10 Wonder Readers by the end of the year that we plan to distribute co to communities in Indonesia. Awesome. Thanks so much for answering these questions. Very exciting. 
Great. Thank you, Stephanie, for those questions. And thank you, team, for those responses. It seems like we have a live question from the audience that I would like to share with you all here. Um, and the question is, I am a university student too, and I'm curious, how did you juggle working on your project while keeping up with your studies? Nice question. Anyone on the team open to take that one? Okay, well, that's a wonderful question. So uh, we created Wonder Reader. Uh, we worked on it uh, in the evening after classes. So Gigi here it has his internship in the afternoon, Philip too, and Arik has his classes. Me, I'm working on Wonder Reader full time, but we are working on it together in the evening. So yeah, we are able to work on it fully. Cool. I want to give the chance for anyone else from the team that would like to respond to this. I think additionally, um, having the work-life balance is also super important. Um, you always, you can't always just be full on with the project. Still have to keep track of your other things, but still keep curious and still uh, look out for things. Especially in the times when we're not working on the project, we're usually doing research on the project. Especially with hardware and all of these different topics like Android, right? So. I think um, being able to bounce working on the project, researching it in the off times as well as during classes is super important in my opinion. Great, thank you for that live audience question. Um, I think it's really appropriate to talk about the profile of the folks who are making, who make up the teams and the time needing to spend on these projects. In addition to Stephanie's questions about scalability and inclusivity of the actual solution being available to a larger audience. So thank you Team Wonder Reader for your time and your response to those questions and we'll see you in a little bit. Thanks. I'm thrilled to welcome Team Rewita. Rewita is a mobile app that helps organ transplant recipients to recover and live healthier lives. The app addresses the mental and emotional challenges that transplant recipients face, as well as the physical challenges of recovering from surgery. The Rewita app is built on a variety of Google technologies, including Golang, Flutter, Firebase, Google Fit, Google Maps API, Google Chat, Google Meet API, and Google Calendar API. Let's welcome the creators of the project, Diaz, Madiar, Din Mukhamed, and Ansar from Nazarbayev University in Kazakhstan. Every year, thousands of people around the world get organ transplantations. In 2021 alone, there were more than 140,000 organ recipients. Recovery after organ transplantation is a critical process that requires close monitoring of drug and immunosuppressor consumption, physical activity, and health conditions. Our team developed a mobile application called Rebita to help manage the recovery process and improve the lives of organ transplant recipients and donors. After transplantation, patients tend to have mental and emotional problems, as well as moral pressure in case of getting an organ from a living donor. After getting in contact with several organ transplant patients and transplant communities in our country, we have concluded a list of features that can help patients globally. Thus, Revita contributes to preventing deaths from post-transplantation hardships and automates many medical procedures. Revita includes features like tracking drug and immunosuppressor consumption, displaying and measuring health indicators like blood pressure and blood oxygen level, making appointments with the doctor and showing the nearest clinics, pharmacy stores, etc. Additionally, our app provides articles on physical recovery and mental health to help patients to stay informed about their rehabilitation progress. Devita is built on the Google ecosystem, leveraging powerful and reliable tools to ensure its functionality and scalability. Firebase is used for the important backend functions, providing us with a powerful cloud-based database, data management tools, and authentication feature. We also use Wear OS and Google Fit for the collection of health measurements data. Google Fit allows cross-platform integration and connectivity with other tracking apps. Additionally, Google Assistant is integrated into the app to improve human-machine interaction for smartwatch users. Our app utilizes the Google Maps API to show laboratories, blood test centers, and local pharmacies. Flutter and Go are the perfect programming languages for scalability of the project. With a Firebase and combination of our stack technologies, we've created an application that accommodates a significant number of users. With the Revita app, organ transplant recipients can take control of their recovery process and improve their health and well-being. Thank you. 
I really appreciate how Team Revita considers the whole life cycle of an organ transplant recovery process. So not just the physical, but also the emotional, emotional and social well-being. So with that, please join me in welcoming Team Revita and our Google judge, Joe, who will introduce himself and ask the team some questions. So over to you, Joe. Hey, everyone. Uh, I am so excited to be here. I'm Joe Davis. I run Google Play Academy, which is an online learning platform to help new and aspiring developers like you all have success on Google Play, distributing your apps and games. Um, love what Ravita is about. I, I have one, a couple of questions for you. The first one is, did you encounter any key health indicators that your solution doesn't solve for? And if so, how did you account for this? Great question. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, so to answer the question, uh, there were some medical indicators that can be pulled straight from smartwatches. Uh, there are blood oxygen level, temperature, BPM, and physical activity data. To get those health indicators, we use Google Fit with Android devices and smartwatches. However, one of the most essential factor that um, provides extensive insights on a person's cardiovascular health was a blood pressure. Uh, so to address this issue, we propose that uh, we'll require our app to use a smart blood pressure monitor that can send data straight to our app through the cloud IoT core with a collaboration of AVR microchips. So this monitor will seamlessly transmit data to our application, ensuring that users can check their blood pressure alongside with uh, other health metrics. So secondly, there were um, other important health indicator that posed the challenge. It was uh, sacrolimus or so-called immunosuppression drug concentration level in blood, uh, which is critical in determining how well the organ will be settling down in the patient's body. Uh, to overcome this issue, we collaborated with the State Center of Transplantology here in Kazakhstan and local laboratories to conduct the in-depth research to find ways for our app to receive and incorporate these lab results into our application. Uh, so these overall um, health indicators and measurements ensure that transplant patients can have a more comprehensive and more accurate understanding on their health status. And can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, transplant patients and communities you partner with? Have you incorporated sort of a continuous process for feedback from users in the app? And what are your next steps to get ensure that that progress continues into your solution? Thank you for the question, Joe. Throughout our journey, we formed strong partnerships with transplant patients in various transplant communities, working closely with state center of transplantology, regional medical coordinators, and local organ recipients. By actively engaging with heart, kidney, and liver transplants, and also dialysis patients, we gained valuable insights into the daily challenges they face for surgery. Incorporating user feedback has been at the core of our development process. With a focus on continuous improvement, we conducted iterative testing of our features and user interface, involving patients in each phase of development. This approach allowed us to address their needs and preferences uh, effectively. Our next steps involve, uh, involve conducting beta testing with a focus group of patients, allowing us to fine tune the app based on their experiences and feedback over several weeks. Collaborating with local social funds will help us scale our solution nationwide, making it accessible to a broader community of transplant recipients. Moreover, as many of our team members are actively involved in medical research within our university, we plan to launch a research and development iterative initiative to create a unified medical sensor. This sensor will be capable of gathering all necessary medical data, streamlining the process for users, enhancing the overall functionality of our app. By continuously seeking advancements, we're determined to make a meaningful impact on the lives of transplant patients and improve their post-transplant journey. No, I think that's so important and already great to see the partnership orient uh, mindset that you have and the continuous sort of hunger to integrate feedback and data. Thanks, Joe, for those questions, and thank you, Team Revita, for those responses. I'm really excited to see folks engaging in Slido and posting some live questions. So I have a question for you all um, in addition to Joe's questions, Team Revita. As a team, how did you decide how you were going to divide roles and responsibilities? So if I may answer this question. So at first, uh, all of us 
uh, were joined by all by one initiative of helping people and having one social project that will help our society in some way. So uh, at first, uh, we started as a pure technical team, which had like um, front-end division and back-end division. For example, Dean Muhammad uh, helped us on building the solid back-end back uh, foundation for our application. Uh, and Ansar, uh, as a product manager in our team, governed the whole process uh, of development, uh, like starting from the UI UX design, moving on to the back-end solid foundation. And Diaz and I, uh, and or had to learn some basics on the Flutter and uh, do the front-end side of the applications. And overall, as a team, we think that all of us are some kind of managers of these products, and we are planning to go beyond the technical scope and try to promote these projects outside maybe of our local community and release it globally. Awesome. Thank you for that response. It, I think the question allows you all to, to start to highlight the various roles that are a part of building a solution where it's not just technical, but like what ways can you help get marketing out, get users actually um, testing with the app. So thank you for that response. Thank you, Joe, for those questions. And thank you, Team Ravita. That's all the time we have for questions. And now on over to the next demo. Hello, everyone. Join me as we head over to the United States and welcome Slugloop. Slugloop is a real-time bus tracking app that was created by students at the University of California, Santa Cruz. The app provides accurate route information for UCSC buses, allowing students to get to class on time while reducing their carbon footprint. The Slugloop app is built with React, Firebase, and Google Maps. Let's welcome the creators, Bill, Alex, Amy, and Nick from the University of California, Santa Cruz in the United States. Students at the University of California, Santa Cruz face a clear transportation issue. The city's metro buses are tracked, yet the campus loop buses are not. This leads to two primary concerns. First, the unpredictability of both loop and metro buses frequently results in students being late to class, negatively impacting their educational quality. Second, students often unnecessarily choose the metro over the loop, reducing the available space for those who really need to use the metro to get home. Slugloop is our solution to alleviate these frustrations, reduce overcrowding on buses, and promote sustainable transportation choices. Let's take a look at how Slugloop works. First, our app is built as a progressive web app, which allows users to save our app for a full screen experience and faster load times. The first time the user uses the app, they are greeted with a brief tutorial explaining how the app works. The app's centerpiece is a map that displays real-time locations of loop and metro buses, with update times shown above each icon. Users can customize their view by selecting specific loop and metro routes that they wish to see. The interface allows users to display either recent buses or all buses, and offers an option to hide time labels for a cleaner map view. We've also integrated a dark mode, perfect for reducing eye strain during nighttime usage. Watch as we track a loop bus in real time, right alongside its actual arrival. Slugloop utilizes GPS trackers and layered connectivity CL4490 transceivers on buses that send location and bus data to a custom ExpressJS server, which in turn updates our Firebase real-time database. Our front-end retrieves this data, presenting users with real-time bus locations on a map using Google Maps API. Thank you for watching our demo of Slugloop. We believe our solution can make a significant impact on the University of California, Santa Cruz, promoting sustainable transportation choices and enhancing the overall student experience. Joe and I are back now with Team Slug Loop. And admittedly, I have to say, I went to a small college campus and getting to class on time was an issue. So I can see the extreme value in having this app for a larger campus like UC Santa Cruz. So with all that said, I'm going to pass it back over to Joe to ask the team some questions. Hey everyone, again, I'm Joe and I run Play Academy, a training platform that helps folks distribute their apps to the world, their Android apps. Um, so let's, let's dive right in. Uh, my first question is, what incentives have you incorporated in your go-to-market strategy that would encourage users to download your app and utilize the Campus Loop over 
uh, the metro buses, you know, with an average daily user base of 40 students and peak usage near 300. What have you learned about the users that you can lean on to continuing to promote your solution? Ultimately, we learned that it's about building an app that's functional and easy to use that solves a real problem for students. Additionally, we've utilized social media outreach across various platforms that resulted in over 4,700 people visiting our website to date. In addition to our own social media posts, our project has had the pleasure of being featured in our campus newsletter, a local newspaper, and the Google Student Developer blog, which has allowed our project to gain more notoriety. We learned that social media outreach is very effective. We saw an increase in new users after each update, culminating in over 90 users per day by the end of the school year. And we hope that by expanding our marketing strategies further, we'll be able to increase our user base by reaching a wider range of students. So next academic year, we plan on posting flyers on campus at the bus stops, as well as launching our application on both the iOS and Android app stores. I love that. You know, improving, getting it out through improving it through every iteration, as well as all of that free organic social posting and even down to posting flyers. Uh, loving that. So my next question is, can you talk a little bit more about your partnerships, um, what they looked like with campus administration, faculty, the local transportation officials? You know, what was your original approach? Was it successful? Did you learn anything about the importance of partnership as it related to the success of your solution? Our partnership with university administration originally started with Professor Veenstra, who introduced us to the initial concept of the project. And without this successful partnership with Professor Veenstra, we would have never been able to achieve our minimal viable product during the Cruise Hacks Hackathon. And it was this achievement that gave us the incentive to start further developing and publicizing the project. We also learned that partnership with campus faculty is essential to moving our project forward. As our partnership with campus staff grew, their trust and support were instrumental in allowing us access to essential hardware on buses and roofs. And as we fixed these hardware issues and improved the app's functionality over time, it demonstrated our commitment and capability. So this not only reinforced our standing within the community, but also fostered increased trust and support for Slug Loop. I love that. And just kind of the serendipity of, of this wouldn't have happened without the, the, the professor and, and continuing on with that partnership. So really great work. Thank you so much, Joe, for that question. We have a live audience question that continues with that theme, actually. So let me read that out and the team, please feel free to respond. Slug Loop is pretty neat. Was the process of pitching this app to your university challenging? If so, how? It was mainly challenging because at first when we started this partnership, they were reluctant to start the, this partnership until they were reassured that we weren't going to drop this app halfway. Um, they wanted to make sure that we were able to continue supporting this app and the app, like if they gave their support for the app, we won't just stop supporting the app midway through the school year. Great. Thank you for that response. Thank you, Team Slug Loop, for those thoughtful responses. And thank you, Joe, for your questions. And that's all that we have for us, Team Slug Loop at this time. All right, everyone, we've made it halfway through the demos. What do you think so far? If you're watching with friends and peers, please make sure to use our hashtag, GDSC Demo Day, to share photos and videos of the fun on social media. Remember that we're featuring hashtag posts on our Demo Day social wall. So make sure to post your watch party for the chance to be featured. We're seeing some great posts so far. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to visit the Q&A tab on Slido so you can ask the student team's questions and vote for the People's Choice Award. Let's take a quick break and see what everyone has been up to on the social wall.
Hello all, it is my pleasure to introduce the project team from Nigeria. FarmX is a repository of digital tools that empowers modern farmers to make informed decisions about their crops. The app provides a variety of features, including crop recommendation, precision agriculture, and crop disease detection. FarmX is a tool that can help farmers to improve their productivity while also reducing the environmental impact of agriculture. FarmX was built with TensorFlow, Flutter, Firebase, and Google Cloud. Let's welcome Victor, Olewashun, Lekun, and Festus from Obafemi Awolo University in Nigeria. Hi, my name is Olufemi Victor, and my team composed of myself, Shion, Lekun, and Festus have built FarmX for the 2023 Google Solution Challenge. Farming is now 10 times more difficult than it used to be. Of course, all these are from several factors such as crop disease to the ever-changing climate. And that brings us to our solution, FarmX. We've created a repository of digital tools to empower the modern farmer. The solution contains several tools, ranging from crop and pest disease detection, to crop recommendation for farmers, and even a wiki for farmers to learn how to farm regeneratively. I'll walk you through a demo of how the app works. On getting to the landing page, the farmer can view the monthly and the daily sales he has made thus far. There is also a store where the farmer can upload his produce for sale we also have a knowledge base where farmers can actually learn how to farm regeneratively for several crops. We also have a repository of tools which we've built for the farmers. For the crop recommendation, we recommend certain crops for the farmer, as well as profile the climate and the soil data, all inferred from open source APIs. We also have a crop analysis tool where the farmer can take a snapshot or upload any image from his gallery. There are also over 150 languages supported for the farmer to use for. The results are in, and we have a apple scab leaf. We also return about the disease as well as the latest curing method. Aside all this, we've also created an IoT device that the farmer can use in his farm to actually get the direct or precise readings from his farm. The IoT device costs less than about 10 US dollars, and yet the farmer can view several data ranging from soil moisture to temperature as well as if rain is falling or not. Much thanks to Google for arming us with a repository of tools ranging from TensorFlow to Flutter to Firebase, Google Maps and others as we create a sustainable and livable future for all, reducing hunger and taking actions to reduce climate change. Thank you. I love how this demo shows real live images and videos of farmers actually in their environment, environment testing the app. I'm now joined by Team Farm X and Joanna, one of our Google judges, who will introduce herself and ask the team some questions. So over to you, Joanna. Thank you so much, Rachel. What an amazing project. I really, I'm really impressed by what you've done, FarmX team. Hi, everyone. I'm Joanna Carrasqueira, and I lead community and developer relations for AI and ML here at Google. Like I said, you have an amazing project, but I also have some questions for you. Can you please tell me a little bit more about your go-to-market strategy? I would really like to learn more about the user journey and how the buyers can acquire the products through the marketplace feature on your app. Who would like to answer this question? Hi, thank you, Johanna, for the question. We at FarmX, our go-to-market strategy involves creating valuable content for our target audience while highlighting the features of our app. Since we'll be pioneering in sub-Saharan Africa, we'll be targeting agricultural extensions, farmer groups, and small farm holders. The user journey starts with the awareness we have created through our market strategy. Both farmers and buyers get onboarded seamlessly, but with tailored experiences. Farmers can upload produce for sale, either instant buys or pre-order, then buyers can simply purchase farm produce listed on our marketplace and while making secure payments through our platform, while we facilitate delivery right to their doorstep. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's very good. Thank you so much for providing further information on that. I, I also have a second question that I like to ask the team, Parmex. Have you tested your IoT device in real life scenarios? Can you tell me a little bit more about that, please? Um, thank you, Joanna, for your question. Uh, yes, we've tested our IoT device in real life. 
Um, our key competitive advantage is that our platform remains fully functional and valuable to farmers, even without purchasing the IoT device. So unlike other offerings, ours is an optional enhancement that allows for more precise predictions and enhanced data visualizations. And because farmers that purchase the IoT not only benefit from it, but also contribute to helping farmers nearby, we incentivize by giving them percentage discounts on every service charge on our platform. Ultimately, the idea is to intelligently drive adoption while empowering the entire farming community as a whole. Thank you so much, Victor. I love the fact that you're empowering the farming community to really take it to the next level. Thank you so much, PharmX. Thank you, Joanna, for those questions, and thank you, Team PharmX. We have a live audience question that talks about taking it to the next level. So this app appears to be a tool that can help many farmers all over the world. Do you have plans to scale your app and monetize? And happy to have anyone on the team take on the question. Uh, yes, thank you for your question. Uh, we have plans to definitely scale up and monetize the app. And we look forward to what the future holds. Thank you once again. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you, Team PharmX, for those thoughtful responses. And thank you, Joanna, for those questions. And we'll move over to the next demo. Now we head over to the United Kingdom as we welcome Team Remora. Project Remora is a smart water pollution tracking device. It uses sensors to analyze various potential water pollutants, providing users with results within seconds. The results are geotagged, allowing users to identify the pollution source using the concentration gradient. Remora was developed in the MIT App Inventor using Firebase, Real-Time Database, and the Google Maps API. Let's say hello to Tong, Shaw, and Eamon from the University of Southampton. The water pollution incidents in Malaysia have been frequent in the recent years, with the 2019 King King River incidents causing 509 hospitalizations due to chemically polluted water consumption. According to World Health Organization, there are at least 2 billion people out there globally that has no access to simply treated water and hence resulting in contaminated water consumption. The authorities have struggled to address these incidents properly, showing the need for efficient and cost-effective solutions to combat water pollution as well as guarantee the public safety. Providing affordable and user-friendly IoT spectrometer will allow individuals to determine the safety of their water as well as exercising their right to know about the quality of water. Remora is a solution that aims to revolutionize on-field research to combat water pollution. It offers a sustainable, portable, and highly innovative approach with low production costs. With Google Product Services, Remora enables the tracking of pollutant sources based on the Analyzed Pollution Index. We believe that Remora is the game changer in addressing water pollution efficiently and effectively. The user will sign up for an account using a username and password first. Now, the user can log into the main page. At the main page, they can choose the preferred pollutants to be analyzed. The start detection button will then be clicked to activate the camera or access the device box. The user can now proceed to capture the spectrum picture of the pollutants we are receiving from the spectrometer. The spectrum map will then be analyzed in a graph will be generated on bottom for professional references. The user could adjust the intensity and the color of the spectrum using the horizontal and the vertical slider for accurate data, as each pollutant has corresponding fluorescence wavelength. As for users of no prior professional knowledge, they could refer to the pollution index at the bottom of the graph. The add point button is quick to save your current location and the associated pollution index. Users can view and manage all the safe location data in the view data section. The map view button is quick to see a gradient marker indicating water pollution levels. Taking multiple samples along the water source allows us to track the source of pollution according to the concentration gradient, where the red marker indicates high concentration and the green marker indicates low concentration. It's a right to clean water. So thank you, Team Remora, for proposing this solution um, in order to detect water pollutants. So I'm back here with Joanna to ask the team some questions. So over to you, Joanna. Thank you so much, Rachel. Hi, Team Remora. I'm Joanna Carrasqueira, and I lead community in developer relations for AI and machine learning here at Google. I'm really excited to be with you all today. And I absolutely love your project. It's so impactful. It's so important. But I also do have a few questions that I would like to ask you so I can better understand your thought process. So how did you decide on utilizing a, three, a 3D printed spectrometer? Did you consider any other alternatives when you were developing your project? And who would like to take this question? All right. I'll be answering it. 
Um, firstly, we would like to thank everyone on the Solution Challenges team for giving us this wonderful opportunity through the platform to share our ideas of innovation. To answer the question, the idea of Remora came about from wanting to understand more about water pollution and the efforts taken in reducing it. We wanted to come up with a method that allows people to detect pollutants in their water because clean water is essential for life. From there, we did our research and brainstorming, and we decided to use the idea of fluorescent spectroscopy, which is the detection of pollutants using light. We chose to use this concept because in the current day, almost everybody has a smartphone that comes pre-installed with a camera. Hence, we realized the great opportunity in developing a spectrometer that is widely available to the public. Currently, lab spectrometers are big, bulky, and require technical expertise in using them. So we challenged ourselves to come up with a similar piece of equipment that is compact, portable, and also user-friendly. And what we came up with was a lightweight 3D printed phone attachment that is made out of PLA material and fitted with a low cost diffraction grating. And when this attachment is coupled with the easy to use software installed on the smartphone, it allows for quick and immediate measurements of pollutant content in water. I'll pass it to my teammate Xiao Qian now. Thank you, Ayman. So we considered using 3D printing as it allows our design to be customized easily. This versatility allows the room for further improvements of our prototype's efficiency. Well, to answer the question that do we have any solution? Do we have do we have any solution to transition our solution into the testing trips? Well, currently um, we are more focused on getting the concentration gradient of the pollutant so that we can track the pollution source. And thus, we are not currently optimizing our spectrometers for accuracy. But in the future, we may consider adding a function to allow geotagging of the testing trip results on top of our already available spectrometer. This is to provide instant data updates and also improve the concentration tracking. Well, to answer the question of the scalability, as for now, the app runs locally on the user's phone and relies on the phone's processor as well as its storage instead of a live server to process and store data. This way, we don't have to actually keep pushing the server updates from our side. However, we are already planning to convert our locally installed software into a web app. By doing so, we can actually utilize cloud services such as Cloud Firestore to manage the app scaling as well as improve its overall performance. This, in turn, will further increase our app's potential in terms of scalability and also overall performance. Thank you so much. Right. I really like how you are um, really planning for scale and impact and having all these um, all these pillars into consideration to really improve your app. I, I have another question that I would like to ask the team. And have you thought about how the testing results may vary across devices? And what mobile devices did you test? And how do you plan to mitigate against this? Can you tell me a little bit more about these questions, please? All right, thank you for your question, Ms. Joanna. So to answer your question, yes, we did test out our prototype on several different Android phones, and this led us to encountering issues linked to image resolution and color depth, which would cause differences in results. Now, as for the result resolution issue, we realized that the camera and the processor of some phones might not be working on the same range of image resolution, which would cause the app to slow down and what more causing lagging of the app. So to solve this, we scaled down the pictures taken for all smartphones to 1090 by 1080 by 920 pixels, which seems to be a working range for the majority phones out there in the current market. 
Now, although this would cause a trade-off in terms of accuracy-wise, but the standardized result is just enough for the app to track down the pollutant source correctly. Now, on the other hand, we also found out that different phones would have different color depth, which means each camera would have different color sensitivity. So again, to solve this, we applied an averaging algorithm code which basically takes an average reading of the intensity from five pixels in front of the chosen peak that the user would like to analyze. And so is there anything else that you guys would wish to add? I'm assuming nothing. So before I would like to end, uh, I would like to show you guys our prototype here. <laughs> so it's just a quick show showcasing things. So that would be all from us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tim Remora. You were very detailed. I don't have any more questions for you today. Best of luck. Thanks, Joanna. I do have a question from the live audience um, to the team. As you built Remora, how did you approach user testing? Well, to answer your question, we have tried to build our first prototype and we asked our friends and what more our other lecturers to test out on the results. And from the result, we found that there are still a lot of uh, improvements that needs to be made, such as uh, the color of the Joe tagging map, uh, the color of the Joe tagging on the map shown for the concentration gradient. It wasn't obvious, it's not, it wasn't that obvious so that the people, they couldn't really tell the differences between the uh, concentrations. And then the other problem is that we were not able to uh, like the, the like the problem that I mentioned just now, we have resolution issue and as well as color depth issue. That was also found during the user testing phase. So we realized that some phones, they might not have the same, uh, their cameras and their processor are not having the same working range. So from there on, we move on to our second prototype phase, which uh, we continue to improve our prototype. So yeah, that's how we approach our users and improve from there on. Love how the user testing was able to allow you all to iterate and provide a better product as you continue to develop. So thank you so much, Team Remora, for your time. And thank you, Joanna, for all those questions. And we'll move on to the next demo. Hello again. I'm getting so inspired right now by these projects. We are headed back over to South Korea. Wonder addresses SDG3. The app tracks and rewards users' physical activity and walking behavior while creating a fun and engaging way to improve health. Wonder partners with local volunteer organizations and provides opportunities for users to engage in walking-based activities that contribute to their communities. The app is built with Flutter, utilizes TensorFlow, Google Map, and Google Cloud. Let's welcome Chan Ho, Kyo, Boyong, and Sugyeong from the Korea University Seoul campus. Approximately one-third of South Korea's population is considered physically inactive. Despite this alarming statistic, many responded that they lacked the motivation to make significant changes to their lifestyle. Wonder comes in as a great solution for those who need a little push. Upon logging in, users will see their profile screen, which displays information such as distance they walked, time spent walking, and their over rating. Users are given a rating based on the total distance, and leaderboards are grouped by districts to make it easy for users to participate and monitor their progress compared with other local users. Now let's look at the map feature. Here, users can find a variety of wandering trails to explore. Each trail has its unique theme and tags. This tag tells the users if the trail is suitable for dog exercise. This icon stands for food tour, where users can walk around local delicacies found along the route. Press the start button, and the app tracks the user's location from start to finish. And done! That's how you earn rating scores. Last but not least, the events feature is where our app name Wonder comes from. It allows users to do wonderful things while wondering. By participating in various community events, they can help their neighbors. One example of a wonderful walk that we do with our community is food delivery volunteering program for the elders. Starting at a local welfare center, users can pick up food supplies and deliver them to elders in need. Users can book their event reservation through the app just like this. 
If you successfully deliver the items, you will be asked to take a picture of the sticker as a token of work well done. Wonder motivates users to improve their overall well-being by encouraging them to give back to their community. Create a better, more sustainable future with Wonder App. I love gamifying walking exercises. So join me now and welcome Team Wonder. Um, it gives a little motivation to your movement. And I have Khan here, one of our Google judges, who will be introducing himself and also asking the team some questions. So over to you, Khan. Cool, yeah, Khan, we're just waiting for some audio from you. Thanks, Team Wonder. I'm going to get Khan on here and ask you some questions to learn a little bit more about your inspiration and motivation while we work through that. Again, yeah, watching your demo just like made me want to do a little shimmy. It's like, <laughs> cool. Just working through here. Okay, and Khan. Um, cool. Great. Can everyone hear me now? We can hear you, Khan. Cool. Yeah, sorry for the technical issues. Um, and uh, hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Wonder. And my name is Khan, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. Um, so first of all, I, I think it's midnight in, in South Korea. So thanks a lot, Team Wonder, for joining um, us late at night um, for the competition. Um, the the solutions um, that you build, I think it's, it's really important because uh, in model um, days, like a lot of people tend to not exercise enough and and having a good life a, a healthy uh habit means you need to exercise uh, regularly so i think this is a very uh, important solution uh, to contribute to that um i have um two questions for you the first one is um I think for an exercise app, it will be very important to get the users to come back to the app regularly um, and start doing exercises. Is there anything in the app um, that you built um, to to encourage users to come back regularly? Mm. So our app encourages users to engage in regular walking with two key mechanisms. First, firstly, we have dynamic leaderboard system. By tracking the distance covered by each user, the app assigns a rank within their local community. These communities are small groups, so making it relatively easy to get to the top ranks. The leaderboard resets on a weekly basis, so it creates an incentive for users to maintain their walking routine. And we also implemented a rewarding medal system. The app grants users various medals based on their level of engagement. For those who use the app daily throughout a week, the full week medal is awarded. Consistent achievement of full week medals throughout the month earns users the full month medal. Additionally, participating in special types of walks like wonder walks, like delivering food to the elders, like uh, taking out an abandoned dog from animal shelter, the walk unlocks more unique and exclusive medals, so there is more user motivation. Got it. Yeah. So gamification to make this more fun and encourage user to to do it like often. Yes, I I think that's a great idea. Um, and um, my second question for you is um, why did you choose like ZCP, Spring Boot, and Docker to build the back end um rather than a more lightweight um solutions? like um, the serverless uh, Firebase backend? Uh, yeah, I agree that a serverless architecture can be a convenient solution for building the backend, but there are several reasons why we choose GCP, Spring Boot, and Docker for building the backend. Firstly, the dependency on the service provider is significant when using serverless architecture. This could make us hard to customize our backend system and migrate on other platforms. Also, serverless architecture can complicate the debugging and testing process. Without a dedicated server environment to replicate locally, it can be difficult to simulate the context where the application will learn. There are also the cold start issue that is commonly associated with serverless infrastructures. This means that the initial response to a user might take longer, potentially leading to a less optimal user experience. 
After evaluating various aspects, we determined that building our one server would be a better solution for our project. Got it. Yeah, I think that's a, a fair assessment and um, uh, thank you for uh, elaborating on it. Well, thank you, Khan, for those questions and thank you, Team Wonder, for those responses. That's all the time we have for questions. Over to the next demo. Greetings and welcome to all the students, teams, and viewers out there. I'm excited to kick things off and head over to Bolivia to hear from Buzzbusters. Buzzbusters is an early warning system that is designed to prevent epidemics of mosquito-borne disease. The system continuously detects and monitors mosquitoes and mosquito-borne pathogens, providing early warning of potential outbreaks. Buzzbusters is able to address a wide range of diseases, including dengue, Zika, chikungunya, and yellow fever. The system is built on a number of Google Cloud technologies, including Vertex AI, TensorFlow, Farbase, Flutter, Google Cloud Storage, Google Maps, and Google Colab. Let's give a warm welcome to the creators, Mauricio, Salech, Wendy, and Moises in Bolivia. Hello, welcome to the presentation of Buzzbusters, the solution we are developing to combat the dengue epidemic in Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia. We are a team committed to sustainable development goal number three, good health and well-being. One of the main causes is that current control measures, such as fumigation, are not being carried out accurately and efficiently. Instead of focusing on specific locations with a higher incidence of mosquitoes, fumigation is being done in a generalized manner in areas that do not guarantee an effective reduction of the mosquito population. The lack of resources and trained personnel has hindered the response to the increase in mosquitoes, worsening the situation and causing overcrowding in hospitals. We believe that this problem is due to a lack of information. However, we think that we can address it by utilizing advanced analytics to predict outbreaks and critical points in real time. This way, we can assist the government and health officials in optimizing priority actions such as fumigation, cleaning of breeding sites, and awareness campaigns to minimize the spread of mosquitoes in specific areas. We believe that with a fleet of low-cost devices utilizing deep learning and computer vision, we can scale and automate the continuous monitoring of mosquitoes. By the way, we have already built a prototype, we will distribute multiple traps throughout the city, collecting information about the mosquito population in different areas and their precise location. Thanks to this continuous monitoring, we can take early action measures before mosquitoes breed and spread further. Expected impact, 40% reduction in infections and hospitalizations, 70% less use of fumigation, 40% reduction in operational costs for public health departments. Additionally, we have a mobile application that complements our solution, the application allows users to view mosquito sightings in their area and provides important information to take preventive measures. Together, we can combat the spread of mosquito-borne diseases and create safer and healthier communities. Khan and I are back with now with Team Busbusters. Over to you, Khan, to ask the team some questions. Hi, everyone. Um, and, um... Welcome to, to the competition. So for Team Bus Buster, um, I have um, have like I feel like the solution is is very close to me uh, because I um, grew up in Vietnam, uh, a tropical country, and there's a, a dengue fever outbreak like happens every few years. So uh, I feel like the solutions that you're building is very meaningful for for. Um, those countries and I'm very glad that, that you were able to make use of machine learning uh, and HTML um, to to uh, build those, those solutions. Um, so again, two questions. Um, the first one is, um, is there any existing mosquito population tracking solutions available in the market today? And how is your solutions compared to them in terms of like cost, accuracy, et cetera? Thank you, Khan, for the questions. Our main competitor is a company from Germany called Biogen. However, we believe that our solutions uh, will be 70% more affordable than theirs. Our prototype has an accuracy of 75, but we are confident that we can achieve an accuracy above 19% like theirs. And now, Mauricio will tell us about the landscape of solutions in Latin America. 
Thank you, Wendy. In our region, there are solutions on the market that only use ultraviolet light and capture mosquitoes. However, none of them have population tracking or artificial intelligence. Our solution is also environmentally friendly because it doesn't use toxic substances. It, it only focuses on mosquitoes and doesn't capture beneficial insects such as bees and butterflies. It is also very, uh, very easy to use and doesn't require any special experience which makes it ideal for a variety uh, of users. Thank you. Thank you for the answers. And I'm, I'm very impressed that you were able to build a device that is much cheaper than existing solutions and also achieve like higher accuracy. Um, very impressive. Uh, and I think like a low price will enable the solution to scale um, to many more places that um, would not have been able to afford um, the existing solutions. Um, so my second question for you is, um, what are the shortcomings of your current solutions that you already know and plan to address? Thank you, Cam, for the question. We identified two types of limitations. For the first one, since we have limited access to electricity and the internet, we will integrate a solar panel for those places where there is no access to electricity. We will also incorporate a SIM module to have internet access. This will allow our solution to work autonomously. And now Moises will tell us about a second limitation. Thank you, Salad. We also like to improve our modeling technique. For example, we plan to use some classification to improve the accuracy of detection through sensors. And we will continue to test more affordable parts so that our solution is more affordable for a wider audience. Thank you. Thank you for the answers. Yeah, and, and I think the challenge that you face when deploying the solutions where internet and electricity is not readily available is it feels so real, um, especially when we try to deploy it in developing countries and where it is needed um, the most. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Khan, for those questions. And thank you, Team Bus Busters, for those responses. We're unfortunately out of time for questions. Thank you, Team Bus Busters, for sharing your project with us. I'm so inspired by all the amazing demos we've seen. Thank you to the top 10 teams, the judges who shared their expertise, and all of you who decided to tune in today. We just watched a bunch of truly amazing demos. Did you have a favorite? Which do you feel had the greatest impact or the coolest technology? We want to hear from you, and you can do that using Slido. To do so, just join Slido and look for the People's Choice Award Room, where you'll be able to vote for your favorite team. This will be your last chance to vote, so please head over to Slido now. You can only vote once and the polls will close in a few minutes. As we wait for votes to come in, I'm going to share some clips that we've gathered from our finalist teams on how you can develop future projects from start to finish. These teams gathered their knowledge and experience from the last several months about what it took to be in a top 10 team. So if you're planning or even considering joining us for the Solution Challenge next year, these tips will be immensely helpful as you develop your next project. Let's see what some of the students had to say about what helped them the most. My tip is to believe in yourself and most importantly, believe in your team. Even if it's code you haven't experienced, it is important to try it first. Collaboration is key. Work on projects together so as to improve your knowledge and skills. Stay innovative, keep thinking, and get a good team because sometimes that's all that matters. Complex problems can be overwhelming, but breaking them down into smaller tasks can make them more approachable. Feedback can be tough to hear, but it is important to be open to constructive criticism. Communicate openly and honestly when your teammates. Take care of your local communities. The greatest impact that we have is when we care for the people around us. Everyone has unique strengths and weaknesses, so don't be afraid to lean on each other. Talk to your users directly and discover what they really need. Please recognize each person's strengths and distribute your accordingly. Go for it. Even if you don't know how, just learn as you code. Work on something that you're passionate about. For passion drives innovation. Find a cause that you believe in and you'll guide you through your project. 
every effort, every job. And every little detail matters, work on each, and little by little you will grow. Don't be afraid to face challenges and try to endure ability to learn and grow. Challenge the status quo to make a difference within your community. Maximize your resources, engage your professors for guidance, and tap into your network for project support. The sky is not your limit, it's your starting point. Wow, these student tips are so inspiring. They've pinpointed some practical tips, such as breaking down complex problems into smaller tasks, tapping into your existing network for support, while also reminding us about the why you're even embarking on the project, which is about caring for and meeting the needs of your community. Thanks for those gems, y'all. Now, onto the moment you've all been waiting for. The teams have presented their demos, they've shared technical responses to the judges' questions, and now our judges have come to a consensus and selected the top three winning teams. And now, in no particular order, I present to you the top three winning teams of this year's GDSC Solution Challenge. Can I get a drum roll, please? Wonder Reader! Your work on Wonder Reader is truly impressive. You built two versions of a 3D printed Braille reader for visually impaired students, and you're planning to release your code and hardware models to reach more developers so that others can create their own versions of Wonder Reader. This is a truly open source and collaborative approach to solving a real world problem, and we congratulate you. And the next winning team for this year's GDSC Solution Challenge goes to... Botbusters! Your team has tackled a significant and life-threatening global problem, the prevention of mosquito-borne diseases. Your early warning system has the potential to have a major impact on large geographical areas with just a few monitoring systems needed. We're excited to see the scalable impact of the system in the years to come. And for our final GDSC Solution Challenge winning team, we have... Head home. Your dedicated wearable device for dementia patients use several tools from Google Cloud. Not only does your app alert caregivers of loved ones wandering beyond their home, but it also provides a loved one with a user-friendly help button and navigation system. You even took it one step further by encouraging local communities to sign up as support guides to help dementia patients get home. This solution has the potential to make a real difference. Major congratulations to these incredible teams. You'll be rewarded a cash prize and swag for making it this far into the challenge. Congratulations again. You all should be so very proud of yourselves. Thank you to all the teams that presented today and to all the teams around the globe that participated in the Solution Challenge this year. Even if you are not in the top three winning teams, all the work you've done is incredibly meaningful, and I encourage you to continue to develop your ideas and projects. I have no doubt that many of these projects will have a big impact in our local and global communities. Okay, everyone, we're not done yet. We've tallied up your votes on Slido. Voting is now locked, and it's time to share the winner for this year's Solution Challenge People's Choice Award. I wonder who it's gonna be. Barn X. The people have spoken. Huge congratulations, Team Farm X. You have earned some bragging rights and can officially call yourselves the People's Choice winner for 2023 Solution Challenge Demo Day. Congrats again to all of our winners this year. You've worked hard to get here and your recognition is well-deserved. All right, everyone. Before we wrap up, I'd like to take a moment to say one more thing to you, our viewers. We truly appreciate all of you. Thank you for joining us today to cheer on these incredible teams. It's been an inspiring demo day. If you enjoy the Solution Challenge and want to continue the celebration with us, we invite you to join us over on Discord with Google Developer Community for our after show to talk with some of our finalists and Google Developer Student Club's team members. I really enjoyed our time together, but I'd like to know what you think about the event. We'd really appreciate if you could leave us some feedback. 
We want to hear from you, so please share your feedback by using this QR code or visiting the URL on the screen. We like to say feedback is a gift here, so thank you for sharing your experience with us. Lastly, if you'd like to learn more about joining a Google Developer Student Club at a university campus near you, visit goo.gle forward slash GDSC. We hope the 2023 Solution Challenge has inspired each of you to keep finding ways to use technology for good. Thanks for tuning in. See you all next year.